us what sex addiction is, um, very simply, it is a, an emotional disorder that leaves the person who has it seeking sex and sexual intensity and sexual fantasy and sexual imagery um, and the pursuit of sex in order to make themselves feel okay in the most basic way just like an alcoholic would have a drink or a gambler would sit down at that blackjack table the sex addict is online looking at porn running around looking at sex workers or trying to hook up with an affair partner because they are broken inside and that brokenness in the way that they are broken leaves them sex addicts really not able to make use of the kind of intimacies and supports that the rest of us do so you know, if I have a bad day and I'm not an addict, I, I'm probably going to call a friend or my wife or, or or husband, whatever it is, and say, I had a bad day and this is what's going on with me. And maybe I go for a run. Maybe I kick the dog. Maybe I take a hot bath. You know, <laughs> don't kick the dog, by the way. Um, but I don't go out and see prostitutes. I don't go to a casino. I don't pick up a bottle of whiskey because I had a bad day. And that's what addicts do. They turn to substances and behaviors to help them tolerate emotions or states of being that they feel are overwhelming to them. And unfortunately, one of the main reasons they have this problem is most of us didn't really have the most stable, supportive, nurturing upbringings. And those of you who've dealt with your mothers-in-law and some of the spouses who've dealt with some partners, parents, no offense to parents, love parents, you did the best you could, but those of us who are in these rooms had some challenges in our upbringing and we didn't necessarily learn some of the lessons that other people need to learn and i think it's important for you spouses to know that we're not about parent bashing it's not my job to say well that your spouse is broken because their parents had did this and if they just done that i mean that's interesting but that isn't the issue the issue is that they need today to learn how to live their life in a way that um, leaves them leaning into intimacy and friendship and support and away from casual, anonymous, um, isolated, sexual ways of making themselves feel better. Um, I, I want to say something, Tammy, I know I'm going on a little bit, but I want to say something for the partners about, um, you know, uh, is there anything that you can do to make this happen or cause this or drive the problem? And I really, really want every partner to hear this. I cannot say this more clearly. There is nothing that you can do to make someone that you love go have sex with another person or go look at porn. Um, you can make them angry. You can let them down. You can upset them. You can get angry at them. You know, you can do whatever you do and then they'll do whatever they do. That's sort of how life works. But there's a lot of things I can do when I'm having a bad day other than cheat on you. There's a lot of things I can do when you and I are having an argument other than pick up some porn. So if you think about it that way, um, does the person have a problem? Yes, they turn to cope and soothe and kind of regulate themselves by looking, turning to sexual intensity. Does that mean that it's your job to keep them calm and out of crisis and not with any arguments or disagreements so that they won't get disrupted and go act out? No, that's their job. Their job, the addict's job, is to come into an awareness of how much support they need, how much they need boundaries and structure, and how they can go about beginning to live their life in a way that doesn't lead them to acting out sexually when they're having a hard time.